Okay. Yeah. Oh, that's me banging around, right? Um, I want to apologise first of all for the ridiculous fucking jumper I'm wearing. Yeah, thanks. Um, it was one of them terrible mistakes. You know when you go to the alternative stores where all the goths and that buy their clothes? And I'll, you buy into it, don't you? Because you see them with the blue hair and all the metal shit in their face, and you think, oh, we're bohemian as well. <laughs> so I bought this jumper and went, oh man, I'm going to look well hot now, the lady's going to like me. I got home, looked in the full length mirror and went, I've never looked more gay than I do right now. <laughs> I'm so wearing it. Now, guys in the audience, I don't know if anyone else says this, but do you have any semi erection trousers? <laughs> It's not, it's just an optical illusion, but like, what is that? What? What? Mm. I throw myself down. Um, right, I went home for Christmas, back home to London, visit my folks and that. And I had to get on a stagecoach coach on the way home because uh, I never book anything in advance because I'm retarded. And um, I basically got on a coach and I went to go and sit next to this fella because I was a bit late getting on. And uh, this is God's Honest Truth, not comedian God's Honest Truth, where they've written it. This is, this is actually happening, right? And I uh, basically got my coach and I went to sit next to the bloke, sort of, uh, you know, sort of strike up conversation with him and oh, looks like I'm sitting with you then. His opening damn bit in the conversation, I shit you not, was I hear voices. <laughs> Of course you fucking do. <laughs> so then he proceeds, oh, well, I was going to sit in the coach with him from London to Manchester, yeah? So he starts telling me that he's shaved his sister, like raped her, tried to kill his mum when he'd been inside, so obviously I was a little bit on edge. All the time he's telling me he's been interrupted by the voices. <laughs> right? Later on in the journey, he gets out like these twigs that are bound together with a bit of string, like chews on them and passes to me. I went, oh no, thanks, mate, I'm trying to give up. Anyway. It's going on and on and on and it's getting more and more freaky. So something inside of me just snapped and couldn't take it anymore. I went, do you know what, mate? I'm not even here. <laughs> she said that as well. She said that. Right. He shit himself and got off a bill on Kings. Right. You're laughing, but I was checking the papers to make sure no fucker got raped or murdered because it had been my fucking fault. Um, while, I, while I was down south, my brother reminded me of this story, but I can't say this is definitely true, but he told me and I believe him. Right, my brother, I'll give you a background story, he's like me, you know, charismatic, <laughs> but he's good looking and uh, a bit more stupid. And he's the biggest stoner you've ever met in your life. Anyone who smokes Jordan, you know he smokes more, right? Fucking waster. He was, he was asked to uh, look after my auntie's flat. She gave him two jobs to do. Keep the house tidy and feed the dog. That's all he had to do. Not rocket science. So he proceeds to get really fucking stoned and trash the entire house. At one point he decides he needs to uh, go out and get some milk because he's run out of it for the bruise. So he goes, uh, Oh man, i go get some milk. <laughs> Sorry, you don't know him or anything, but that's a fucking brilliant impression. <laughs> So he goes out to the shops, right, to get the milk, and the uncle comes back early. Uh oh. So, he comes back from the shops with a picture frame of a watering can because he's forgotten what he went out for. <laughs> when he comes back in, she sees him and slaps him around the head and goes, I thought what I told you to feed the fucking dog. He said, I do feed the dog. He said, How's a dog supposed to eat a fucking watermelon? Because apparently he's just got a watermelon like, stuck in the dog bowl and fucked up out. Like, that was job done. Now, I usually ended on a punchline with that bit of material, but fuck it, I'm going to end with the truth because it's funnier. Right? He's never seen me do comedy and he went on that YouTube because there's one of my video, like a video of me, of me on the YouTube. Have you seen that video site with the little video clips on it? Anyway, he saw me do comedy on that and he saw that routine. And he went, What the fuck is wrong with him? I was like, oh shit man, so what's, what's up? Because you ended the fucking, you didn't even tell the story right, man. I was like, oh shit man, what, what did I get wrong? And he went, I didn't give it a watermelon. Like, no? He went, no, it was an apple. And to be fair, the dog gave it a go. <laughs> you can't fucking write that. This is life. Oh shit. Um, 
What the hell is that, sir? I've been doing 12 hour days at work because it's been fresh this week. Any, any students here? <laughs> Apart from them, any students here? <laughs> Alright. Fresh this week is annoying. You've got lots of wacky fucks running about going, oh, I'm living away from home. <laughs> I, never went, I never went to university, but I was never that much of an annoying dick at any point in my life. Right. So we're handing out flyers all day, right? I've been doing a 12 hour day, so I'm handing out flyers all fucking day, and then I worked in the bar at night. And this was last night. And I decided whilst I was at work, I'd take a line of speed just to get me through the night. And it's at this point of the set that I'm re realising that was a mistake. Because <laughs> all day long I've just been wanting to cry. To be honest with you. But you guys have made that turn around because you've been really nice. So I like it, that. Well done. Um, yeah, I've written an observational bit of a comedy, right? Because I normally do all this anecdotal bullshit. Like, but it's not bullshit, it's true, but I usually do it. I'm off and on a bit, but I'm doing now. But I've written an observational bit of material. Do you want to hear it? Yeah! Very good. I'm getting the air cut because I'm sick of having long hair, right? Because I'm sick of having conversations like this. This, like, You'll get this like 30 year old bloke come up to you. He's got a short hair, he looks like a businessman, but he'll come up to me and go, I used to have long hair. <laughs> what the fuck am I supposed to do with that as a conversational gambit? Do you know what I mean? <laughs> Where, where's the conversation going to go? Anyway, that's not the real reason I want to give up. Give up, give up, give up having long hair. I want to get it cut because I'm sick to death of having a shower. And the ladies might be able to back me up on this, or they might not, and make me look like a nutter. But I'm sick of pulling the really long hairs out of my ass. Anyone? No. No. Anyone? Yeah, yeah. You know, wicked. Now. My ex-girlfriend, right, she freaked the shit out of me because she told me that if I pull one of them hairs out of my arse really fast, it will slice, that's the word she used, slice my anus. Yeah, she was retarded. Well, not actually retarded, I wouldn't shake a retarded girl, though foreplay would be fun, you know, just hand, just hand them a balloon and they're away. Um, too far. Anyway, yeah, she told, well mind you, who's the retard, right? Because she told me that, and to this fucking day, I still go out of the shower, go, oh, my wife will be bumped, right? And they go, ooh, ooh, ooh. Right? And then I decide to pull it out, but because of those words, slice your anus, I'm there, like, I'm trying to crack a safe, just going. <laughs> I'll be honest with you, it's not entirely unpleasant. Now, I usually end that bit, right, with the, with the true story of my girlfriend and me, a different girlfriend, experimenting with things up my bum. But I'm usually really embarrassed, and I go red face when saying it because I'm genuinely embarrassed to say it, and then the audience picks up on it, and also my mates pointed out that the world doesn't need to hear that. So, you know, I'm not going to on that bit. Uh, I've given up drugs because there have been very, very adverse effects on my life. I'm forgetting things like my mum's birthday and all that sort of shit. So I'm giving them up, I've decided. Uh, because drugs... Uh, I'm getting annoyed just thinking about it. Drugs are the reason I look like a skin suit someone's forgotten to put on. <laughs> right? Every time I sneeze, I lose a fucking year of my childhood. The other day, I fucking yawned. And now I don't know how to use a fucking seesaw. <laughs> Conversations like I did, um, like I did not so long ago with my girlfriend, or well, the girlfriend at the time, where she opened the door. Poor bitch, was a long-suffering girlfriend. I deserved dumping. She opened the door to see me. I got grass in my hair, no shoes on. I had shoes when I went out. I've got no shoes on now at this point in the story. Right? I've got a cat under me, which ain't even mine. Right? All the while I'm trying to face the music, while the cat's now fucking talking to me. Right? The cat, at which point, says, "You know, you don't have to put up with any of her shit." <laughs> At which point, out of desperation, tears in her eyes, the girlfriend just goes, Normal people don't do things like this. I just went, Do I look fucking normal? <laughs> Shut up. At which point, the cat went, I'm so proud of you. Thank you very much.